Many thanks indeed for joining us for tonight's broadcast here on Wanda TV. We trust you're doing well. I'm Ethan Tashabi and you are Hassan Chibirango. And he's my guest anchor tonight. He will be telling us more about him. And you probably, if you were on my social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, you saw uh, what he will be telling us about his book. But he's just not an author. He's just a man of incredible stuff. And he will be joining us later on to share his story. You're watching our TV News Live from Kigali. News Justin, Rwanda's Arthur Asimwe was today elected to chair the African Union of Broadcasters in a vote held this afternoon in Dakar, Senegal. Mr. Arthur Asimwe, who is also the, our, our Director General here at Rwanda Broadcasting Agency, was elected by the Union's 13th General Assembly to chair the Union for the next four years. Asimwe has been serving as the second Vice President of the African Union of Broadcasters. In his, and this voting exercise, rather, Rwanda was contesting against Ivory Coast. Well, congratulations are in order for our Director General, and we wish him all the very best at the helm of the African Union of Broadcasters. Now, the best eco-friendly projects have been awarded cash prizes to expand their activities. This was at, was, was at rather at the event uh, to, to celebrate uh, the World uh, Environment Day here in Kigali. Jen Mutoni kicks off tonight's edition with that very report. Among the award-winning projects was one by the youth and for women, including a project of making tiles out of plastic bottles and plastic bags, a project for making pods, agriculture and animal husbandry activities that are eco-friendly and other projects. The projects were awarded cash prizes, where two of them were given 7 million rand francs, while the other two were given 5 million rand francs. <laughs> Objects that are harmful to the environment are considered as waste products across the world, such as plastic bottles and papers. We turn them into decorations that can be used in homes and other things such as earrings, necklaces and plates. We make use of these waste products that harm the environment. During the World Environment Day celebration, the Minister of Environment, Dr. Mujah Maria Jean d'Arc, pointed out that the earth is our source of sustenance on a daily basis, hence activities that harm the environment affect the human well-being as well. Juliet Cabrera, the Director General of the Rwanda Environment Management Authority, says that the fact that some Rwandans consider the environment as a labor market is a positive step in conserving the environment. Today we were awarding youth and women cooperatives who are doing uh, different projects in the circular economy space. Uh, we saw a women cooperative who do um, uh, tiles, plastic tiles from single-use plastics. We also saw another cooperative who, uh, which actually extracts water hyacinth from lakes, different lakes, makes canvas out of them and then uses that canvas for painting. So it's, come, it's a, a journey of coming from development of policies, laws, uh, going to inst institutions, institutions being set up, but now going into the real practical aspects of uh, actually getting involved in activities, economic activities, which generate revenue, but which help in the protection of the environment. The World Environment Day is usually celebrated on June 5th, but was celebrated on Friday, 3rd June, in Rwanda, because it would be on Sunday. It is a day with a theme. We have one world, and we must preserve it. Jane Mutoni, RTV News. Thank you, Jane, for that report. Now, Rwanda and Mozambique have signed an extradition treaty and a mutual legal assistance in criminal matters agreement. The agreements were signed this Friday by Rwanda's Minister of State in charge of constitutional and legal affairs, Serena Nyirahabimana, and the visiting Mozambican Minister of Justice, Constitutional and Religious Affairs, Helena Mateo Skida. We have more of this report. The extradition treaty and the agreement on mutual legal assistance in criminal matters signed between Rwanda and Mozambique technically means that no more criminals will hide in either of the two countries, according to the officials. This instrument covers all type of crimes that were committed in Rwanda, even it was before this agreement. So it means that it's not only 
one type of crime that Rwanda uh, uh, will be able to follow and to bring the people to come and respond to the justice. For Mozambicans to go and uh, uh, be judged in Mozambique or at least if even if it, if it was judged here in Rwanda have the opportunity to go back to Mozambique and to be in prison in Mozambique. So it happens both sides. I think this is the, the, this is the, the most important thing is that we want to fight crime. Rwanda's minister in charge of constitutional and legal affairs, Sorina Nyirahabimana, says that the agreement signed with her counterparts of Mozambique is in Rwanda's interest as it will bring Rwandan fugitives, including perpetrators of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, to justice. Urwanda rufite inyungu zuko umunyuwakora icyaha Rwanda has a vested interest in being able to prosecute fugitives who committed crimes on Rwandan soil hiding in Mozambique, whether it is genocide, economic crimes, or otherwise. This agreement will help us find evidence of crime and extradite criminals back to Rwanda and be prosecuted by Rwandan courts. Rwanda and Mozambique have also recently signed cooperation agreements on security, trade and investment, as well as other legal frameworks on justice. Rusizi District has agreed to facilitate investors to invest, especially in the tourism sector as one of the least engaged sectors in the area and yet potentially beneficial in terms of income. Jen Motoni has more. Investors in the region bordering the city of Bukavu in the DRC say that people there can be interested in tourism activities. Tourists do come to visit some of our tourist attractions such as the Chiamudongo Park, Nyungwe National Park and Lake Chivu and also cross-border treads do take place as Rwandans go to Congo and Congolese come to Rwanda. This is confirmed by Darius Sumuni Mukunda, the vice mayor of Wukavu, who says that Rusizi and Wukavu have good relations. Comme nous tous constaté. Just like you saw, Rusizi town borders five entry points, which is a great opportunity for investors because businesses have a chance of succeeding here, and this can benefit both Rwanda and Congo and the East African region as a whole. However, there are fewer investors compared to the region's investment opportunities, especially tourism, such as Lake Kivu, Wugarama Hot Springs, a part of Nyungwe National Park, Chamudongo, Hombo. The first tarmac road to be constructed in Rwanda is one that links to Sisi and Congo, Kinshasa, and the Kamembe Airport in Rwanda, which is now making it easier for people to travel through Sisi as before it was considered remote. It is a district rich in agricultural activities, such as Bugarama rice. It is also where the coffee plantation in Mibirizi was started, and cross-border trade and five markets connecting the district to other countries. All of this, the district says, has not yet been properly produced, as there is a need for animal feed processing industries and other agricultural and livestock products. Investors say that they want to contribute to this as well. The plane is available every day, and it's fast as well, because it only takes 25 minutes to reach Kigali from Kamembe. At a joint meeting of the district, the RDB, the Bukavu City Administration and tourism agencies, the Ivomo and Umugano centers were identified as the ones to help the region in tourism. They can choose what to focus more on by, first of all, making a tourism master plan so that when a tourist comes, he or she can be shown different activities and places to visit. Secondly, before we build a new project, we should first develop those already in place by improving service delivery to a high standard. The vice mayor in charge of economic affairs, Ndejijimana Luis Munyemanzi, say the district is ready to facilitate, especially those who want to invest in tourism. We want investors to know that we have various tourist attractions and empty land spaces where hotels can be constructed like it is done in other places, and that as Rusizi district we are ready to facilitate investors as required by law. There are currently no statistics on the district's tourism status, but it is still lagging behind compared to other parts of the western province. Jane Mutoni, RTV News.
Thank you, Jen, for that report. Now, the East African Community Member States Armed Forces, Police Personnel and Civilian Components from six countries, namely Rwanda, Burundi, Kenya, South Sudan, Tanzania and Uganda, today started 12th East African Community Armed Forces Field Training Exercise codenamed Ushilikia Noimara 2022 at Uganda Rapid Depo Deployment Capability Center in Jinja. Now, the two weeks long exercise will be carried out under the theme promoting peace, security and stability towards the East African community integration. While opening the exercise, Uganda's third Prime Deputy Prime Minister, Lukia Nakadama, said that the exercise provides the East African community partner states an opportunity to enhance interoperability between armed forces in addition to consolidating the East African integration agenda. Professor Gaspard Banyanyiwona, the Executive Secretary of Inter-University Council for East Africa, who spoke on behalf of the ESC Secretary General, said that the exercise is designed to pra practice uh, the participants in planning and conduct of integrated peace support operations, counter-terrorism, counter-piracy operations, and disaster management, while in the purpose of enhancing the capabilities of the partner states' armed forces to combat security challenges. Rwanda was represented at the ceremony by the RDF Army Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Mubalaka Muganga. In other stories, the Ministry of Health notes that more effort is being put in medical research in order to develop the sector. Now, it is against this background that the policy, policy governing medical research in Rwanda is being revised. Betty Mutuni has this report. Some of the 200 responders in the research, the two were the organized with the COVID-19 and underwent home-based care. They were given food supplements known as Protheon by Lindovuzima Clinical Research, which helped them to gain energy and recover fast from the pandemic. I was bad off. I had fever. I was coughing and I had body weakness, but they helped me by giving me medicine or food supplement. With the fruits in a month, I was okay. By the time they came to see me, I was so weak. I could even find it so hard to breathe. But after getting this medicine, in two days, I got better. The principal investigator of this study, Dr. Vicent Mutavas, stressed that they want to expand such medical research that several diseases caused by the various. Well, we're looking at safety and efficacy of an immune formulation that was given to COVID-19 patients who are either mild or um, moderately sick uh, for COVID-19, and we we're following them up for a period of 57 days. So today we have come here to uh, share with you the results of uh, the study. Uh, and in a few words, we have a positive uh, study or positive clinical trial where we, we saw that those who, or those participants who received uh, Prothion or that were in the treatment arm actually had better outcomes than those who are um, in the placebo arm or those who received placebo. Dr. Coronel Nihabose, the head of the clinic and the public health services in the Ministry of Health, notes that such medical researchers are being carried out by the relevant medical agencies in order to provide solutions to the existing medical issues. The, the, such studies uh, build the capacity of uh, local researches um, in terms of uh, the, the regulation. We know that we are, we are moving to vaccines manufacturing, so one of the requirements is to have uh, a regulator, which is a Rwanda FDA, in order to monitor the, the, the progress of the study and also the outcomes and the, uh, to, to, to monitor the safety profile uh, in terms of uh, those drugs and the, the, the patient's uh, safety. So uh, having a capacity of a regulator to monitor th those researches, uh, be the capacity locally of our, of our regulator uh, to monitor those, uh, th those, those researches. And also it's a, it's a contribution to evidence-based uh, medicine uh, in order maybe our practitioners can take decisions based on evidence that have been highlighted by, by, by outcomes of, 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 this, uh, of these studies like these ones. Mm. The Ministry of Health 
notes that as Rwanda prepares to start manufacturing vaccines and increase the number of internal medicine, it is so important to prove the quality of medical research as well as developing training in medical courses. Betty Mutoni, RTV News. Good stuff. Thank you, Betty Mutoni, for that report. Now, experts in the service sector say that ongoing training for service sector stakeholders can change a lot in this regard and improve service delivery in the country. Precious Jersey with more. Those working in the service sector conduct their operations in hospitals, banks, and hotels, among others. The quality of their services not being satisfactory to their clientele has resulted into them being often criticized, and here's what they have to say about it. What if it were me? How would I behave? Would I also be rude? And in, that, in putting yourself in such a position, you find yourself cooling down. You cool down. You have to first relax. You need to understand. Give a listening ear to the person. Give all your attention to the person. And in doing so, the person will calm down. Some of them are of the view that collaboration and cooperation will smoothen service provision and improve the customer service experience. Anne Mugabo, head of Skills Alive Incubator, the company organizing the training sessions, says they're aimed at improving the quality of service provision, basing on the feedback they have received. The purpose of this training is really to address the challenges that we are facing in the service industry or in service delivery. As we have had complaints from our customers, we've had complaints from different sectors as that our services are not really to, uh, providing the best service that we should be doing. What we are doing right now is really to deliver the training to participants, to trainees, so that when they go back to their organization, they train their staff, they give good services of which we think will change a lot of things in the organization. The training sessions have been going on for the past two days and have been attended by service sector managers as well as the junior employees tasked with delivering the services in question. Precious Tidesi, RTV News. Welcome back. Glad you are still watching RTV News. I'm Hassan Chibirango, your guest anchor tonight. On the international scene, inflation in Zimbabwe has climbed above 100% for the, last, for the first time since last June. It now stands at 131.7%. The levels of hyperinflation are hurting the local manufacturing industry, and there are concerns that it could lead to joblessness. We have this report courtesy of Al Jazeera. Well, um, where do I start from? <laughs> Uh, I've known you as Pastor Hassan uh -huh. Chibirango. I hope yeah. um, I'll get used to calling you something different. <laughs> Author, uh, leadership uh, experts. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen you talk on a couple of events as a you know a leadership trainer. Um, so pastors are preachers, right? Yeah, they, they do preaching. Preaching is what is part of what they do. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, um, I'm very honored to have you. Sure. And thank you to my, you know, every other time you don't see me in church, <laughs> just know that you're here. <laughs> you're working. Here. Yeah, you're serving the nation. I am. That's I am. a good thing. I'm very, very pleased to have you. Same How way. are you doing? Very well. Mm -hmm. It's been an exciting journey. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a bit, but I know. Uh, it's I know. good to see you again. I know. I haven't, you know, weekends, every time. Um, I'm glad you actually wrote this book. <laughs> we are talking about this book tonight, and we are talking about this man that I've known for a couple of years now, uh, close to maybe eight years About now. eight, yes. The Gift of Mondays. We are discussing Monday on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but thank God it is Friday. Thank God it's Friday, right? <laughs> it is Friday. <laughs> and that's actually one of the reasons that, well, let's start from there. Um, mm -hmm. Before I ask you who you are and what inspired the book itself, mm -hmm. tell us about the, you know, your, your Mondays and your Fridays. Yeah. How are they? Yeah. Do you actually get the difference? Like you feel it. You have <laughs> Monday blues? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> I don't have Monday blues. I'm actually, I'm excited every time Monday is coming up because uh, I've always loved the concept of work, yeah. uh, which is what came up. Uh, this book came out of the concept of the idea that work is a good thing yeah. and we shouldn't wish it away, cast the day, you know, and then enjoy and speak good about Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Oh God, it's Monday. Yeah. So it's uh, one of those things that is quite exciting. And the Friday? 
Friday is uh, pretty much the same as Monday for me. It's a work day, I'm excited. I have a burst of energy on Friday as I do Monday as well. So f for me, Friday is, is one of the most exciting days. And it's not because I'm looking forward to going out and you know, going to Gisimenti and you know, drink on the streets and all that. <laughs> it's because I get to host people like you. Sure. And they, they get to sit in here and they, mm -hmm. you know, have this experience of what I go through yeah. the course of the week. How did it go for you? Oh my goodness, <laughs> nerve breaking and, yeah. uh, but you know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, I always sit on the other side of the screen. So yeah. sitting here, reading the news is uh, quite, it's surreal for me. Thank it's you. a marathon actually. Uh -huh. If you look at it, it's back to just back to back. back, to back. Yeah. So let's talk about the gift of Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, what inspired the book? I mean, a lot has been already said about the yeah. book, uh, media reviews and everything. Mm. But which one line that you actually look at and you're like, this describes the entire book? Yeah. So for me, the gift of Monday was written out of a passion uh, and a desire to see people fall in love with work as a concept and not tolerate it, yet we can't uh, do without it. It's a gift, ultimately. Monday represents, uh, represents work. And uh, this book was inspired <coughs> by, um, so an article, really so many things inspired it, but it's, a, it's an article I read while in the lockdown yeah. 2020, that uh, in a certain country in the West, 80% of heart attacks that happen to working males usually catch them between 8 to 9 a.m. on Monday morning. <laughs> and a few of them actually succumb to heart attacks. So I, I dug deeper and did research, and I realized that Monday and work is killing people. Yeah. Uh, so anxiety, stress, depression, all those things, Monday blues, as you mentioned, is causing people to, for their hearts to give way. And I realized, you know, how do we turn the tide of hatred and tolerance for, for work to one of joy and excitement and, and seeing it as a gift because it in, indeed is, is a gift. You know, the, the Monday anxiety actually kicks in Sunday evening. Absolutely. And I, I get to have a that as well. Uh -huh. Every other Sunday evening, I'm mm -hmm. like, Oof, another week. <laughs> another week, yeah. <laughs> another Monday coming up. Mm -hmm. So um, what has been the reaction? I mean, it's been out for a couple of days now. Yeah. What has been the reaction? And what has been the most pleasing reaction of yes. the book? Yes. I think uh, even the title itself is, is a bit, it's, uh, it's counterintuitive. When you say the gift of Monday, it, 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 it triggers a thought. Man, how can Monday be a gift? In fact, somebody walked up to me recently and said, Hassan, I love to hate my Mondays. What is this you're writing about Monday being a gift? So because of that and um, the, the curiosity it raises, it has really been received well because deep down inside, people really want to find a place of purpose and passion in their work and labor. And anything that can help them, you know, jolt that inspiration uh, is, is something that is welcome. So I'm really, really amazed that uh, this book has been received well. In fact, my publisher told me, uh, imagine we publishers, that, uh, that this is the first book of its kind in Rwanda, written by a Rwandan, that is in the self-help uh, category, if you will. Yes. And I thought that was really a privilege and an honor for me to contribute to, to you know, Challenge. I need to start <laughs> thinking about writing books now. Yeah. Um, so, um, do you have one of the favorite paragraphs or line or whatever that actually dis best describes this book? Yeah, I think for me one of the things is um, is I went into the idea of the number one reason that people hate work, and this is statistics, yeah. is uh, is actually their bosses. It's not the environment. It's not the pay. <laughs> it's leaders. So I have a chapter in there called The Boss Factor. It, it's really written to leaders. And uh, in The Boss Factor, I talk about boss being the common denominator of team health. And uh, maybe I can read something from, from, from that chapter. As I, as I close the boss chapter, and this is what I write and say, um, as you grow in your leadership, strive to become the boss that people want to work for, report to, and serve under develop the traits that make for a great boss, and unlearn the traits that make for bad, bad ones. There is no greater legacy for a leader than to have a positive imprint in the hearts of the people he or she has had the opportunity to lead. There is no greater stewardship for a leader than the stewardship of people. When all is said and done, you want it to be said of you that you were a good boss who took care of the people in your care. <laughs> Hi, bosses. <laughs> yes, I think we get to learn from this. Um, just an extract sure. of what we, we should expect in this book. Mm -hmm. 
How much is this book? So this book is being sold by the publisher at 15,000 francs. Yeah. And uh, next week, it should be out in, uh, in the different bookstores in the city. And uh, in about two weeks, we'll be putting it online as well. So people who want to read it digitally can access it on Amazon and Kindle and so on. The Gift of Mondays. Before I let you go, uh, yes. does this um, book in any way mm -hmm. resonate to your life? Oh, yes, it does. It does. Your upbringing or something? Like absolutely. That. Absolutely. Um, so I grew up in a working family. I started working when I was 11 years old. Now, legally, that was <laughs> oh, Lever. child labor. But because of the circumstances of my growing up, so I, I, I was trained to work and I developed a work ethic as a young person and developed a passion for work really from a tender age. I started doing business at the age of 16. So I've, pretty much the majority of my life has been working. So I am passionate about work. And that is why this book is really drawn out of my own work experience. And I know this for a fact, that uh, you can love what you do. And uh, you shouldn't be in the category of people who dread Mondays and wish them away, because work is a gift. It is a gift, and it's a good thing. Okay, we don't have much time, <laughs> but quick fire questions. Yes. What is your favorite book? Oh, wow. That's difficult to answer, because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm an avid reader, so I have so many favorites. One in the leadership category, I would say, uh, the 360 Degree Leader by John Maxwell. And uh, one in the productivity category, I would say uh, there's a book I'm reading actually called Deep Work by a gentleman called Carl Newport. Uh, yeah. Can I visit and get to have a few copies? <laughs> uh, sure. So you're right now entirely focusing on the book or you're yeah. also doing something else? Yeah, so I'm doing book tours and all that and uh, speaking about the book. My social media is buzzing yeah. with the book. Yeah, but I'm currently also managing a program called I Lead Rwanda. Yeah. And this is a program that is a brainchild of the John Maxwell Leadership Foundation. And it's being uh, uh, stewarded in Rwanda by an organization called African New Life Ministries. And that program is taking values-based leadership into schools, secondary schools in Rwanda and universities. So it's a new program, but we are, we are looking to take leadership into schools and, and, and help raise values-based leaders. Uh, in in uh, in our Rwandan society, so that's what I'm doing currently. You forgive me if I say Pastor Hassan. Uh, yeah, many thanks that's okay. for your time. <laughs> Thank I've you. Known you for that. Yeah, and I still do pastoral work. It's yeah. something I'm very passionate about. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me, Ethan. Really a pleasure, and All I right. look forward to. Do you have something coming up? Another book? Very soon. Very soon. Yeah. For real. Yes. In about a year, I have another book coming up. We can't wait to host him back discussing the next book. But for now, it's the gift of money. You can find it around the city of Kigali. Um, and the publishers themselves are also have a couple of copies. Yes. Uh, they are Imagine We publishers. Um, uh, Dominique is a friend, and yes. I think I'll go. Dominique, I need a copy of this. <laughs> Until next time, me and my guest anchor, and of course, author, pastor, preacher, leadership trainer, Hassan Chibirango and the entire news production team, many thanks for your company indeed. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>